60 feet deep. So, 61 feet, 62 feet, going live with the phone, Jones, 64 feet, underwater. Alright, so we're just starting to get to the point of like I was saying. You should see those coming into view on both sides of the submarine. These were the first structures that we put down here on the bottom. They were down here before any of the other structures that you'll see later on in the dive. A little bit of an experiment. These were built out of concrete at PVC pipe. We put these down here in 1989. Generally, there's two reasons that we have for putting artificial structures like this on the bottom. Oh, you want alive. to grow the fish population the in those areas. And also, ideally, you want to try and grow coral as well. Yeah, your um, turns out that the pH this. level of this concrete Views is a little bit low, so they're a little bit acidic, um, which meant there's not too much coral that's going to grow in these structures. They didn't really account for that beforehand. Um, so we learned from that mistake a little bit with some of the reefs that you'll see later on on this time. So these don't have as much coral here, but they still attract a lot of fish. So it's still beneficial having them down here. Fish are attracted to pretty much any large structure, whether, whether it's natural or artificial. Something that provides a little bit of shelter or a place to hide from their predators. And these structures are actually, I 
look at a replica, they're actually kind of miniature replicas. These are only about a quarter of the size for what they use in Japan for farming seaweed. So these are already pretty big, but the ones that they actually use for growing seaweed over there are really, really big, way, way bigger. Got those two ropes kind of pointing off the end of that line of structures. That helps our pilot kind of line up. So we're gonna get out a little bit further past those structures. We're gonna spin around and then line up so we can go back along the side. Also throughout this dive, you guys will see a lot of seemingly random stuff sitting on the bottom. There's a lot of ropes, bricks, cinder blocks sitting on the bottom. Um, those are also put down here by us. They're all there on purpose. We have our dive team put those down here actually. Um, they work as kind of navigational markers for our pilots because you can't use GPS or anything like that underwater. Um, so that's all we've got. That and the digital compass basically for navigating the dive site. So all our pilots know this dive site extremely well. Have a really good visual memory. Kind of more time you spend down here, the more you start to recognize little landmarks, different coral heads, little ridges, lots of different lava rock areas. So all our pilots could bring the submarine down kind of anywhere around here and they would kind of very quickly be able to realize where they are and exactly where they need to go. So we're doing that U-turn right now. I'm sure you guys have already noticed the submarine is very slow. We only go about three miles per hour at top speed, so it takes us a bit of time to spin all the way around like this.
Alright, so we're making a little bit of a turn to Farmer, heading further up. We're making our way over towards the next reef, which is good to you can see we're about to break 100 feet. We're gonna go look at two sunken airplanes sitting on the bottom. And again, like everything else at the dive site here, they were put down for a purpose. They did not crash, nobody got hurt or anything like that. The company that they used to fly for was going out of business, so they were trying to sell their airplanes. So we just bought two of them and then put them down here on the bottom. So we're going to go take a look at both of those. There will be one on either side of the submarine. First one should come into view on the starboard side, and then we'll see the second one on the port side right after we pass the first one. There's that first airplane coming into view on the starboard side, like I said. And you're at around 100, looks like 101 feet. As you can see by looking down, can't really go too much further down than this. We're basically on the bottom right now. But it's nice because we've got skis on the bottom of the submarine, so when we're in these wide open sandy areas, we can kind of land on the bottom a little bit if we want to. Tons of those little yellow, they're kind of long yellow fish. If you look carefully, they've got tiny blue stripes. Those are called ta'ape, or blue striped snapper. Um, those are some of the non-native and invasive species here in Hawaii. So not really supposed to be here. Originally brought over from the Also got those big little hanging out underneath the wing. We do sometimes see sharks down here. Um, usually they're just sitting on the bottom. They're pretty lazy during the day. I would be way more scared to see an alula down here than a shark if I was scuba diving. I've heard stories of people getting their ribs broken um, from getting rammed by those alula. So you gotta watch out for those for sure. But those sharks are definitely pretty docile most of the time. We see like white tips is the most common one we see. And um, yeah, they're pretty lazy. Don't really do too much. Right there's that second airplane on the port side. See there's a little bit of coral growing on top of those wings. These are both built out of aluminum. As you can see they're still a little bit shiny. Tons more of those tape out here. Little section of the fuselage right there. Looks like you can see wires poking out down there. That's actually called wire coral. It's another variety of coral. It looks very different than more of the traditional like antler coral. Tell them travel bloggers they can step their game up. Come on, giving you views you can use. 